I'm Dr. Trené Jordan Sr., the senior pastor of the Mount Canaan Baptist Church. And I'd like to take this time to welcome you to our Mount Canaan worship experience and to our virtual community. You know, it is my prayer that something will be said or done that will pierce your heart to bring you close or closer to God. Mount Canaan is a community-oriented church of believers. We believe in teaching and preaching the Word of God. We are a place where we reverence our Heavenly Father through songs, worship, and praise. We're a place where we train up and teach our youth about Jesus. Please join us as we enter into the worship service that is already in progress. Again, we welcome you and we love you. May you be blessed. Good morning, Mount Canaan. We come to you this morning to let you know that God still rules and he reigns in our life today. If you feel that in your spirit, come on and sing along with us. Hallelujah. Power and majesty. Power. 
Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for who you are. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for being a God that is worthy of all the honor and all the praise. Father God, we love you. We bless your name. We lift your name up high because you're so worthy to be praised. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for the voices that have went forth today to set the atmosphere for the word to come. Father God, I ask that you bless every singer up here. Bless our pastor. Bless our pastor and minister of music. Father God, for leading us in worship. But Father God, we know there are individuals that are watching from their homes right now, God. Father God, there is a word that needs to go forth today. Father God, I am removing myself to allow you to intervene in me, Father God. Have your way. Allow your word to pierce our hearts. Allow your words, God, to, to push us to move further in your glory and in the plans you have in store for us. I thank you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God wherever you are. Wherever you are right now, God is too good not to be praised and not to be worshipped. I tell you, God has blessed us individually as well as collectively. And I am so honored to first of all be alive, to have another chance at life. And those moments where I fell, God said, you know what, son, I'm going to give you another day to get it right. And he didn't do that just for me. He also did that for you. So do not take your chance that has been given to you for granted. Listen, we're about to end this year. We're about to end this year. And let me tell you, this year has been crazy. I don't even have to tell you that. You already know how, how crazy and unprecedented this year has been. But God has brought us all the way into November. And we have another month before this year ends. But God is the same God today that he's going to be next year. And he's the same God today that was last year for us and we just thank God for that I am honored to be standing here in front of my church family uh, wherever you are in the world we have people from overseas we have people from different states that worship with us and we are so honored so wherever you are I bless God for you I thank you for spending your time your precious time to be with us every Sunday morning every Sunday morning and on behalf, in the absence of our pastor, pastor, thank you so much for allowing me to stand in your place, in your absence. Thank you for trusting me with your people and your sheep. Pastor, don't let anybody get in front of y'all. So to have this opportunity once again, I am beyond ecstatic. So I just thank God for this opportunity. Listen, I have a word from you to, for you today, and um, I want you to... I need to get this stand. Is there a stand I can put this on? Yeah, let me borrow that stand, brother. Thank you so much. And I want to deliver this word the way that God wanted to deliver. But really, I just want to encourage you. I will not be before you long. But I do want to say what the Lord has for me to say today, all right? So if you have your Bibles, I want you to open up to the book of Mark. Book of Mark. We're going to go to chapter 5, chapter 5. This is a familiar passage. Many of you remember this. It's been preached many times, but one thing I love about the Word of God, it don't matter how many times you read Scripture or read passages from the Bible, you always get a new revelation. And I want to talk today. Chapter 5, verses 25. Verses 25 to, we're going to go to 32, verse 32. And the word of God says this. Now a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years 
had endured much under many doctors. She has spent everything she had and was not helped at all. On the contrary, she became worse. Having heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothing. For she said, if I, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be made well. Instantly, her flow of blood ceased and she sensed in her body that she was healed of her affliction. At once, Jesus realized in himself that his power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing against you and yet you say who touched me? But he was looking around to see who had done this. The woman with fear and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be healed from your affliction. May God bless the reading and the hearers of his word that we will not just be hearers, but we will be believers of the word as well as doers of that word as well. And we will live the life accordingly. Amen. I, I just want to speak and talk to you just briefly, just for a quick moment from the topic from ordinary to extraordinary faith. From ordinary to extraordinary faith. Listen, I don't know where you are right now. I don't know where you are sitting. Perhaps you're sitting at your kitchen table and you're sitting in a chair and you're drinking a nice hot cup of joe. <laughs> Now, for some of you that have no idea who Joe is, some of y'all probably like, who in the world is Joe? Well, Joe is another term for coffee. <laughs> so maybe you're sitting at your kitchen table drinking your coffee. And as you're drinking your coffee, you're watching this service. And you've been watching the service every Sunday on your tablet or perhaps on your phone. Or perhaps you have a television in your kitchen. I don't know where you are at this present moment. Maybe, perhaps, you are sitting in your living room and you are sitting on a comfy, comfortable couch and you have your feet kicked up on an ottoman. I don't know where you are. Or maybe you're in your bedroom. You're, you're, you're laying in your bed on your back and you're watching me right now. You can see my face. You can hear the sound of my voice watching me on the television, the big screen TV that's in your room, the one that God blessed you with. You're watching this service, and, and, and maybe you're not laying on your back. Maybe you're sitting up, and your back is up against your headboard. But uh, wherever you are, whether you're sitting on a chair in your kitchen, whether you're in your living room, maybe you're in your man cave, you may be in your she shed, I don't know where you are, your bedroom, wherever you are, I can guarantee you this. When you sat down on your chair, when you sat down on that couch, when you laid down in the bed, you had no doubt in your mind that that chair and that couch and that ottoman was going to hold you up. You know why? Because you had faith that that chair and that couch was going to hold you up. That, that's what faith looks like. But isn't it interesting how we can have so much faith in man. We can have so much faith in a manufacturer. We can have so much faith in objects that we do not, we fail to realize that we, where is our faith when it comes to God? Where is it our faith when it comes to the one who created the man or the woman to create the product and to create the product for we can be, have created for ourselves a comfortable comfortable atmosphere see 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 we 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 find faith in so many other things rather in where faith should be laid and that is at the feet of Jesus now now let me give you another example in the reverse in the reverse let's just hypothetically say that you got sick you're sick and you went to the doctor and when you went to the doctor you went there and you walked into 
the doctor's office and you looked around and you saw that it was standing room only. It was so many patients there waiting to see the doctor. And you're standing up and you're like, listen, I've been standing up far too long. I want to sit down. And there's nowhere for you to sit. But all of a sudden, the nurse practitioner comes out and she says, Keisha, Keisha, we're waiting on you. And Keisha gets up and she gets up and now you have a seat awaiting you to sit down. Now, let's just hypothetically say that you go to the chair, you go to the seat, and as you're sitting there looking at that seat, for some reason it causes you to pause because you're wondering, you're looking at this chair and you're saying, I, I'm not sure if this chair can hold me. I'm not sure if this chair is, is strong enough to, to keep me from falling. I don't know. Perhaps that's you. Let me let you know something. If that's you, you just exercised no faith whatsoever. Isn't it funny how we do that in our lives? We hear God working miracles in people's lives. We, we hear about stories of how God turns someone's situation around. We, we look at how God has healed somebody's body, how God has opened up doors for someone to get employment. We look at that. We rejoice with them. We praise God with them. We pray for them that God will work a miracle. But when it comes to us, for some reason, we don't feel like that God can do the same thing for us. Let me tell you something. God is the same God yesterday. He's the same God today, and you best believe he's going to be the same God forevermore. Listen to me. Listen to me. God is not a favor of person. If he did it for your neighbor, he can also do it for you. I'm a living witness. That's why we have to rejoice when God blesses other people, because your blessing might come right around the corner. Let me let you know something. Where is your faith? We have to get to the point. Where either you got faith or you don't have faith. It's black or it's white. There's, there's no gray area. It's a yes or it's a no. And we got to make sure that we have the faith that God said that we need to see miracles happen in our life. See, see, see we, we, we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, this is the thing about faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, pastor always tells us if, if you can see it, then it's what? It's, it's not faith. If you can see it, it's not faith. But the substance is, is, is testimony. Substance is what you've already seen God do. So you may not see what you're wanting God to do for you, but you have substance because you've seen him do it before. Listen to me, listen to me. We got to have faith. Now, 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 the Bible tells us, this is what I love about the word of God. He, it tells us that we got to have faith. But the Bible doesn't tell us that we have to have some grandiose faith. It doesn't have to be so huge. That's why I love the word of God, because it makes things so simple. We're the ones that make the word of God hard. The Bible says that all we need is faith as big as a mustard seed. We, we need mustard seed faith. And if you've never seen a mustard seed, a mustard seed can fit right here between between my thumb and my index finger. We just got to have faith as a mustard seed. But you just can't have just that ordinary. It's ordinary faith. It's, it's normal faith. But when it comes to that point in your life where you need an extraordinary miracle, we got to do something with that small faith. Listen to me. If we want to see extraordinary miracles worked in our life, then we got to do actionary things. We have to take action, ordinary measures. Because the Bible says it don't matter how much faith you have. The Bible says faith with wild works is dead. Listen, you got to work that little mustard seed of faith. You can have it. That's cool. That's good. And that's all dandy. But you got to be able to work that faith by faith. You got to be able to fast. You're going to have to get up early in the morning sometime, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. You're going to have to spend time with God. You're going to have to go to bed late at night because you got to open up your word. You got to pray to God. You got to spend that quality time. You got to be able to do things that you thought you would never be able to do by faith. You got to put faith to the test. You got to work that faith. 
Yes, yes, yes. And so many of us want to know why our faith is not working for us. It's because your faith is dead. You're not working that faith. I, I, I've been a victim of that where I've been asking God to do this. I've been asking God to do that. And I'm not seeing God working when I need him to work. And then I had to realize, the oh, boy, you're not working your faith. Have you prayed lately? Have, have you read your word lately? Have you spent time with God lately? Have you prayed for somebody else? You got to work that faith. Now, listen, I, 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 as I go to this, this, this passage right here, Mark 5, I, I, I love this passage. I love this passage. And it's a familiar passage. Many of us have heard this passage often. But in this story, it tells us about a woman. In some translations, it say a certain woman, which means that this woman is somebody that people know about. They heard about this woman. They may have seen this woman, but this woman is no different than you and I. What you and I have in common with this woman in the Bible is that she has an issue just like we have issues. Oh, yeah, you ain't got it all together, homeboy. You ain't got it all together, sister. Let me tell you something. You got issues. Yes, you do. You have issues. I have issues. If you're living on this earth and you're breathing God's air and your heart is pumping blood through your veins, if you have not ran into an issue yet, best believe it is on its way. We all go through issues. And the Bible says that this woman had an issue for many, many years. And this issue that she had would not get resolved. It will not be cured. It has not been cured. She tried everything in her power to get through this issue. And what did the Bible say? The Bible says she had an issue of blood. Now, this woman's issue was so, so huge. This issue was so taxing on her to the point I can only imagine that she was exhausted. Let me ask you this. Have you ever gone through an issue far too long? And you've been praying and, and you've been believing God. You've been consecrating yourself. You've been reading your word. You've been separating yourself and isolating yourself to be by yourself with God. You're doing everything in your power to see God work a miracle in your life. And you still have not seen the results of your labor. Is there anybody here that ever felt like that? And when you've done that, you find yourself exhausted. You find yourself physically exhausted. You find yourself psychologically exhausted. You, you find yourself spiritually exhausted. I don't know about you, but I've been there. You've been exhausted to the point that I wanted to throw in my faith. I've been exhausted where I wanted to give up. I've been exhausted where I didn't want to come to church. I've been upset. I've been hurt because I did not see God working what I needed in my life at that time. The Bible says this. It says, now a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years had endured much under many doctors. She had spent everything that she had and was not helped at all. On the contrary, she became worse. The Bible said she suffered now, now, I don't know if you really ever suffer. We go through a lot of stuff. and yeah? We have some bad times and we go through some bad moments. But I don't know if you ever suffered. This woman suffered, which means this woman, uh, she only didn't just go through this pain, but she went through pain. It, it, she went through distress. She went through hardships. You got to understand that she had an issue of bleeding for 12 years long. She suffered. And the Bible says this. In the same verse, it says that her issue became worse. Woo! Have you ever had an issue? But the issue didn't just get better. The issue that's just getting bad, but the issue got worse. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And this is going to sound very counterintuitive, but I got to say this, and I hope this blesses your head off. Listen to this. Sometimes you got to be thankful for the worst in your life. Hear me out. I know that sounds crazy. 
But sometimes you got to be thankful for the worst in your life. Sometimes you got to bless God for the worst in your life. Why, TJ? That sounds crazy. Why should I be thankful for when it gets worse in my life? Because number one, when it gets worse, that is a sign that something needs to change. That's a sign that something you're doing is not working. That's a red flag. That's an alert system that's saying, hey, you need to try something else. And let me tell you another reason why you need to be thankful for your worst. Because your worst isn't as bad as it could be. Because do you know it could get worse than worse? It could be worse than worse. Do you know the day that you think it's your worst day ever, you are living somebody else's dream because somebody wish they had your worst day than the worst day that they have? You need to thank God that it ain't what it could be, it ain't what it used to be, and it ain't going to be what it could be. Let me tell you something. You better thank God and rejoice in your bad times. Rejoice. In the times that it hurt, rejoice in the time of pain. Rejoice in the time of confusion because it could be worse than worse. Come on now. Come on now. I, when I think about living with a bullet in my head, the other day I began to weep and I began to cry because I've seen pictures of people that have been shot in the head and got a bullet in the head and the side of their head looks different. The side of their head don't look as normal as mine. Let me tell you something. Thank you, God. They said I would be blind for the rest of my life. I lost my sight. God gave me my sight. I could be up here blind. They said I will be living in a vegetative state. They said that I will be clinically brain dead for for the rest of my life, I thank God that it wasn't as worse as it could have been. You better thank God for your worst moments. You better pray for those who got it worse than you got it. But they said this woman's issue got worse. It got worse. It got worse. It got worse. See, 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 we hear about her issue of, uh, of her blood. But, but what we got to understand is this woman had three issues. See, we, we don't talk about this, but, but she had, when I tell you it got worse, she had a blood issue, but now she got another issue and another issue. The Bible tells us that she had a physical issue, which was her blood. Now, listen, I, I, I ain't never been a woman. I don't plan on being a woman. I thank God that I'm not a woman. And I know you women, you have this thing called the menstrual cycle. Now, 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 I know y'all don't want me to talk about it, but it is what it is. Y'all got a menstrual cycle that comes once a month or something like that. I don't know all details. But what I do know is that y'all go through some pain during that week. Now, now for what I can rec remember is that when you go through this cycle, it is pain maybe for seven days. All right. I, 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 now, I don't know. I ain't never felt it in my life. Don't desire to feel it. But I have a sister. I have a mother. I have a wife. I have cousins. I have female friends. And I have seen the pain that you all had to go through. Yes, yes. And you know what? Oh, my God. I got a seven-year-old daughter. And I don't know when that time go come. But I just pray that her mama is around when it happened. Let me tell you something. I understand that I've heard stories of the pain you have to go through. But can you imagine? That's seven days out of a month that you might have to go through it. But can you imagine that adding 24 to that seven and it's 24-7, 24, 24 hours, seven days a week, you going through that bleeding, that pain? But this woman, she didn't just go through it 24-7. She went through it 24-7 times, 24-7 multiplied by 24 7 the bible says she went through it for 12 long years can you imagine going through what you go through on a week 12 years brothers i know we may not ever know <laughs> we may not never know we may hear stories of what they go through and we may not go through menstrual cycles but let me tell you something there's issues we deal with every day and many of us have been dealing with it longer than 12 years and you want to give up and you're looking for the end you're looking for the light at the end of the tunnel let me tell you something there comes a time when enough is enough yes yes but this woman she went, she had a blood issue. She also had a financial issue. The Bible tells us that she spent all of her money 
with doctors to help her with her problem. And then not only did she have a financial issue, she also had a religious issue. Oh, yeah, that's right. She, she had a, a physical issue. She had a financial issue. When well, I'm talking about getting worse, and she had a religious issue. Now, listen to me. What was the religious issue? The Bible tells us when you're a woman and you bleed constantly like that, you are considered unclean. Where you can't nobody touch you. You have to isolate yourself. So not only are you in pain, not only are you financially broke, now you're isolated. Now you feel alone. Now I understand. Perhaps this is why the doctors couldn't help her. Because how in the world are you going to be a doctor and you're supposed to help me with my issue and you can't even touch me? Because if you touch me, you're considered unclean. You can't even look me in my eye. You can't even check my blood. You can't even check on my organs because I can't be touched. That's probably why they took the money because they can't even be around her. This woman has three issues. But it gets to the point that regardless of what they say you can and cannot do, it gets to the point where you got to figure out how do I get through this. Let me give you a word of advice. If you find yourself in a situation and, and you want to figure out how to get out of it and you don't know what to do, let me help you with something. The first thing you need to do is you need to pull out God's resume. That's right. You need to pull out God's resume. You need to go and you need to look at what God has done for other people. And if God did it for them, I'm going to say it again, he could do it for you. That's right. You need to look at Jesus' resume. Yes, and you got to look and you got to rely on the testimonies of other people. You got to go to other people. You got to remember the testimonies they told you, those testimonies that you rejoice about. You got to look at the testimonies that people are putting on social media. You got to look at that and say, if he did it for them, he could do it for me. You got to be able to find something to encourage you. Yes, Romans 10 and 14 says, but how can they call on him they have not believed in? This woman heard of a man named Jesus. But how can she go see Jesus if she did not believe in him? See, there was something, perhaps, it doesn't specify it in the Bible, but perhaps she lived in a community where it was, she looks outside of her window. She see a man that, used to, that, that was blind. Now he's walking without a cane. He's walking without su uh, support. He's walking without nobody uh, uh, showing him where to go. Maybe she looked out of her window and she saw somebody that could not walk. Now they walking. They walking and they walking down the street saying, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, heal me. They, they proclaiming the goodness of Jesus. Perhaps... She heard somebody else's testimony. Listen, that's why this is important. It is important to share with people and with the world what God has done for you. Because some people don't believe until they hear a story. They hear a story of what God has done. The Bible says, but how can they call on him they have not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing about him? You got to share the word. And how can they hear without a preacher? Now listen, and listen, and listen. I, I can hear some of y'all thinking, well, I ain't a preacher. I'm not licensed as a preacher. I'm not certified to preach. Let me tell you something. You are a preacher. Because when you're preaching, all you're doing is proclaiming the goodness of God. You're proclaiming the gospel. And it's you are called as a Christian. If you've been called to ministry, you've been called to, to, to be a child of God, you are a preacher. And you need to be preaching around the world, around your community, maybe even in your own home. Paul is quoting this scripture. Paul is quoting the prophet Joel when he is saying uh, to call on the Lord in that time. He said, if you call on the Lord, you'll be saved. But what Paul is saying in this scripture, in Romans 10 and 14, when it says, how can they call on him they have not believed in? How can they believe without hearing about him? And how can they hear without a preacher? What Paul is talking about is expressing your faith. Expressing your faith. See, when, when you're expressing something, what you are doing is you are putting thought to words. You're putting thought to words. 
and your words should be your walk. Whatever you speak, you should walk it out, okay? Now, 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 I don't know why this woman heard about Jesus. I don't know how she heard about Jesus, but the word of God says that she wanted to get to Jesus. So she knew Jesus existed. So where did she hear about Jesus? She heard about it from somebody else's testimony. And the Bible says this. The Bible says that she said to herself, she decreed and she declared, she said to herself that I will touch his clothes and I will be healed. Now listen to me. Listen to me. What did she do? She heard something. And when she heard something, she had a thought. And when she got that thought, that thought said that I'm going to find this man named Jesus. And what happened was when she heard about it, there was something that began to rile up in her faith. Something inside of her began to make her decree and declare what was going to happen. Let me tell you something. When you declare something, what you are saying is you are making something known. You're making something known. And when you decree something... You are speaking it into existence. It is an order. It is a legal authority that God has given you because you have death and you have life in your tongue. So she said, when I touch his clothes, I will, I will, will is decree. She decreed and she said, I will be made whole. She just declared. And what she said she was going to do, she was going to do it by any means necessary. Now, remind you, remind you, she ain't supposed to get out of the house. Remind you, she ain't supposed to be around nobody because she is considered unclean. But it got to the point that she said, it's either do or die for me. And she pressed her way to Jesus. She pressed her way to the crowd. And she said, it's do or die. She said, I'm going out here in public. I'm going to go around a crowd of people and they could kill me. They could stone me. They could take me out right there. Why? Because it's the law. It's a religious law. But he, she said, I tell you what I am going to get to Jesus by any means she said they may kill me but I would rather die and be dead rather than be alive and live dead she said I am going to God and I'm get to Jesus by any means necessary she said forget religion she said the hell with religion oh yeah I can see you twisting in your seats. I said the hell with religion. Why did I say that? I said that simply because the devil in hell has used religion far too long to keep people from Jesus. Come on now. The devil has used religion far too long to keep people from from Jesus. They said that this woman couldn't get out of her house. They said this woman couldn't get around people. So how in the world was she going to get healed by Jesus if she stuck and stayed with the law, the religious law? Come on now. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. You might thought I cuss, but let me tell you, we go through hell every single day in our life. Why do you want to live in hell and go to hell? Let me tell you, you you better touch, you better go get Jesus by any means necessary. Come on. Come on. She said, I got to get to Jesus. So many times in religion, we run people away. We run them away from our churches by the way we do stuff. We don't want to change with the times. I understand there's ways we used to do stuff, but what worked then don't work now. What we used to say then don't say that now. The terminologies have changed. Let me tell you something. God will never change, but his methods change. This woman said, I got to get to Jesus. She got to get to Jesus. So what she did, she pressed her way to God. She pressed her way to the Lord. She pressed her way to the Savior. She pressed her way to the healer. She pressed her way to Jesus Christ himself. And she broke all religious laws. She crawled on her knees. She said, listen, if you're going to let me get through, if you're going to let me get up close because of what I have and what I'm dealing with, she said, I'm going to get to him by any means necessary. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get low. I'm going to crawl right up underneath your nose so you don't even see me. You don't even see me coming. And I'm going to go down on my knees and I'm going to crawl. Let me tell you something. Sometimes when you want to press your way to Jesus, sometimes you got to get down low. You got to get on your knees. You got to humble 
humble yourself. You got to prostrate on the ground. You got to humble yourself and say, God, it is me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Sometimes we are too, we are too up here. We are too uh, spiritual. We are no earthly good. Sometimes you got to humble yourself to get the healing that you need from Jesus. She humbled herself and she crawled away to the Lord and she got close enough, close enough to at least just reach up and touch the hem of his garment. Listen to me, listen to me. When you get low, sometimes you got to just raise your hand in worship. You say, Lord, I need you, God. God, I need you to heal my body. God, I need you to heal my resources. God, I need you to heal my family. God, I need you to heal my marriage. God, I need you to heal my children. God, I need you to do this for me. God, I need you to do that for me. And sometimes it will not work until you humble yourself, get low, and reach up and grab his garment. Stop thinking you all that. You ain't all that in a bag of chips. You need something, but any means necessary. We want extraordinary miracles, but we just use an ordinary faith. Without works, without works, this woman went to Jesus. She got to Jesus, and she touched the hem of his garment. Are you willing to go through what this woman went through? Are you exhausted? Are you, are you, are you just tired and want to give up and, 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 and you have no more energy and you want to throw in the towel? You want to say, forget my faith. I, I, I once believed, but now I don't know. And you're turning away from Jesus and Jesus sitting there with his hands out and say, I need you. Just come here. I'm here. I, just come close. I, I, I'll meet you halfway. Have you ever been there where you're like, look, Lord, I need you. God is standing here waiting on you to get here. God is standing here waiting on you to use your faith. God is saying, look, just touch me. Just touch me. Whatever your issue is, walk in faith. No God can turn it around. I need you to do that. I need you to also, I want you to follow this woman's process. I want you to build a relationship with Jesus and not just do religion. I, I, I need you, I need you to, to say, Lord, if I don't get to Jesus, if I don't build a relationship with Jesus, nothing that I need is going to happen. I need you to humble yourself and pray. I need you to reach up with your heart and your faith, and I need you to touch Jesus. The Bible says that, that what happened was Jesus was going on his way. He was going on his way. He was crowded. It was crowd following him from everywhere. But as he was walking... Being Jesus, minding his own business, the Bible said in the middle of him walking, he stopped. And he turned around and said, who touched me? Who, 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 who was that? Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. Who touched me? And they said, well, Jesus, how, how could you ask that question? And, and you're around hundreds of people around you. Everybody's touching you. She, he, said, he said, no, no, no. Who touched me? Everybody else is rubbing up against me, but somebody touched me. There was something about her faith that pulled something out of Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you, that's extra nor or extraordinary faith right there. That ain't no ordinary faith. When you can touch Jesus and something pulled out of him, usually Jesus is putting something in us. But when you can pull his essence, if you can pull his glory out of him, if you can pull that by your faith, let me tell you something. You ain't seen nothing. If you want to see a miracle, touch Jesus' heart. This woman, her faith pulled something out of him. And then he turned around and he said, who, who touched me? And she saw, he, saw, she, he saw the woman trembling. He, he saw her uh, uh, scared. And, and, and she told him, I, I was the one that touched you, Jesus. I, I was the one that did it. And immediately he said, go in peace. You are healed from your affliction. Now listen, I could hoop if I knew how. I could I can sing a song if I wanted to. But that's the end of the story. The end of the story is that she touched Jesus. My question to you, are you faithful enough? Are you holy enough? Are you in a relationship enough with Jesus that when you call on his name, when you reach out and touch him, he knows that he's been touched by something different. 
Listen to me. Listen to me. It's one thing to have ordinary faith. That's cool. That's good. That's all dandy. I, t- I said that. It's ordinary faith. It's normal. That's the faith that God talks about. But when you want extraordinary miracles to happen for you, you have to take extraordinary measures to get it. Don't get caught up in religion. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, oh my goodness. Oh, my goodness. If you don't have a relationship with the one who can heal, the one who can deliver, the one who died on the cross for your sins and mine, the one who took those nails in his hand and in his feet on the crown for your sins and my sins, if you don't have a relationship with him, I offer Jesus to you today. Do not log off of this streaming platform without putting in the comments that I need Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I don't, do not log off if you don't call someone and tell somebody, I need you to pray for me. I'm dealing with this issue. I'm going through this problem. I'm going through this turmoil. I want to give up. I want to quit. I need you to be there for me. I don't, do not log off and don't let nobody know you need them. This woman needed a miracle. She couldn't get it from her doctors. She couldn't get it from family. She couldn't get it from the crowd. She only could get it from Jesus. So what I want to do today, I want to pray for those of you who are going through an issue right now. And you've been trying with everything you have inside of you to get through it. And you've been wanting to give up. This this year, 2020, has been difficult. It's it's been hard. It's, it's been a mess. And you at your wit's end. And you said, I don't even know if I want to make it to 2021. Let me tell you something. God wants you to touch him. And all you got to do is do it by faith. All you got to do is go get it. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Everything you need is at the bottom of his garment. You just got to reach up and get it. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this word. I thank you, Lord, for what you have done. I thank you, Lord, for the miracles you are working at this present time in people's lives. I thank you, Father God, for that woman who has been healed. Thank you, Father God, for using that woman's story, God, that have lived on for centuries and have touched people all around the world. Thank you for her story. Thank you, Father God, for sharing her faith with us. Thank you, Father God, for being a God that keeps your promise. Promises. Father God, build up our faith. Strengthen our faith. Help us strengthen our faith. Father God, I know God. I know God that resistance, resistance that we have to fight every day is hard. But it's the resistance that make us stronger. It's the resistance that help us go look for another way out. It's the resistance that help us go to the main source of healing and deliverance. And that is you. God, I thank you, Lord, for the word that went out today. I pray, God, that this word has ministered to somebody. I I pray, God, that it pricked and touched someone's heart. And that after today, they will never be the same. They will be transformed in their faith and in their walk with you, as well as their relationship with you, Jesus. I bless you and I love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless God. We would like to thank each of you for your continued financial support of the Mount Canaan Baptist Church. Your contribution enables us to make a major impact in the community through our different ministries and to continue the day-to-day operations during this pandemic. As stated in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given to you a good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over. There are several ways to give. The first is through our church app, 
which can be downloaded to your device under the name Mount Canaan Chattanooga. The second way is on our website at www.mountcanaan.org. The third way is to mail your contribution to P.O. Box 16177, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37416. We also have someone to receive your contribution immediately after our morning virtual service at our 4801 Highway 58 location. If any concerns arise or you need assistance, call the church office at 423 423- 624-4080 or email info at mountcanaan.org. Again, we thank you for your continued support and may God continue to bless you and keep you is our prayer. Bless God, bless God. Listen, I cannot, we cannot thank you enough for your continuing to continuous giving that you've been giving to the church. Listen, you are helping us do ministry in a mighty, mighty way. So I want to encourage you all to continue to give. We still have ministry that we have to do. We still have to take care of the works of the church, and you have been helping us do that. So I thank you so much. God bless you, and I pray that you get it all back a hundredfold for your obedience of what God has required and asked for us. Actually, also, I just want to say right now that I love you all. I love you. We're in the holiday season. Be thankful that we made it this far. Be thankful that we made it this far. God is a good God. God is an awesome God. God has been faithful to us. There's a lot of individuals that are not here that was here last year due to what we're dealing with this year. But God has been good. So I want to make sure that I encourage you to continue to rejoice in the Lord. Enjoy your family. Enjoy this time. And remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. God, I bless you, Father God, for what you have did today. I thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives collectively as well as individually. God, be with us, Father God, as we we go throughout the remainder of this year. We bless you, God. We are expecting great things not in 2021, but we're expecting great things even before then so we can go into the next year with the blessings and miracles from you. In your name we pray, amen. God bless you, love you, miss you, and you all have a wonderful week.